Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix Rollbench video series. This is Tim and we are right in the thick of doing our activities, our getting started activities for our Pulse Programming Guide. We are ready for number three, activity number three, which is moving our servo motor. So um, like we always do, let's gather up everything we got, we need, uh, and I've got it here. I've got my computer uh, with the software loaded on it, ready to go. Got my Pulse controller, uh, charge battery, Servo motor, and again, I just want to make sure everybody's clear, the servo motors, the difference between those and our DC motors. The casing is black instead of gray, and I have a three-strand uh, wire that comes from uh, out of the motor to the pulse programmer uh, controller that is black, red, and yellow. So again, standard servo versus DC motor, black, three wires. So I've got that, and then I have my USB cable. So We've got everything gathered up, we're ready to go. We can go into our software and we can again go to our examples and we go to getting started activity three. Just so everybody's aware, I mean, you don't have to just open the example. You can do these from scratch. We would encourage that, but we've got the examples there as a quick way to uh, no fail as far as the safety net that you can just open up what you need. So let's talk about what we've got in our program real quick. Again, we have this setup block that kind of gives you the framework or structure for your program. Everything that we want to run first, we're going to uh, get that in uh, our control palette. Um, so we can put in a pulse begin, and you see that it's already in there. One of the things that we need for moving servos is be able to uh, set a servo speed. We need to tell that servo how fast to move from position to position. So we do that with our set servo speed. We only need to do that one time in our program. So we put it up in the run first area. We talk to, uh, we can decide to talk to what servo we need, uh, one through six, because we can connect physically six servos to our uh, pulse controller. And we tell it how fast to, uh, to move. Uh, anywhere from zero to 100. So that's a percentage of how fast the servo will update. Then in our main looping uh, structure of our uh, framework, we can set up position uh, and tell what the servo, again, one through six, uh, where to go uh, as far as what position to take. And remember, a servo is a little bit different from a DC motor. A DC motor would just rotate in a direction at a given speed uh, uh, continually. Uh, until we tell it to stop, but a servo has a range of motion, has, uh, can go from zero to 180. Um, so that we need to tell it to go to a certain position in that zero to 180 range. For instance, if we tell it to go to 90 and it starts at zero, it'll move uh, to that 90 position from zero. But if we're at 180 or 120 or wherever we're starting from, if I tell it to go to 90, it's gonna know where it's at and where to go to get to that position that we want it to be at. So um, that's the advantage of, of a servo motor is we can tell it to go to a specific position in that range of motion. So we're doing that with our first block, then we're delaying, in this case, three seconds. We're, we're making sure we give the, the motor, servo motor time to get from position to position. And then we're going to the other opposite end of the range of motion, we're going to 180 for the first block, then we're going to go to zero. So we're just going to swing through the entire range of motion and we're going to do that in a continual loop. So let's go ahead and make our connections. We're going to start with our battery. Uh, again, it goes right underneath the uh, on off switch on our pulse board, black to the outside. We're going to connect our servo. Again, three wires, black to the outside in our number one servo position, just like that. We're going to make our USB connection the top of the board and into the computer, just like this. And then we're gonna turn our board on. And we know it's on with our blue power light. So let's go ahead, go back into our software and let's go ahead and upload to our controller. I'm gonna click on my button there. It's gonna open the IDE. And I can see that it's waiting and I should be getting a data light here fairly quickly. And uh, there it goes, tells me it's successfully uploaded and I should have a green light here. So if I pick up my servo and I hit my green button to execute, I should see that it's gonna go through my range of motion. 
and just swing back and forth at a speed of 25%. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? So how could we change that? Let's look at our code. Let's make some minor changes. Let's change our update speed. We want to move a little quicker. So we go back into our setup. Let's change that to, oh, let's make it 75%. And you'll see that when I made the change on the left side in my graphic environment, my right side, the text environment updated automatically. Uh, let's change our time frame. So if we're speeding the servo up, it shouldn't take quite as long to, to get through the different motions. So I'm going to change that to two, two seconds and change my last one to two seconds as well. Again, the cool thing is as I made my entry over here on the left side in the graphic environment, my right side updated. One of the things that I want to make sure we understand, though, is I can only edit here on the left side. I see the results on the right side, but I only can edit in the graphic environment. Let's upload that to our controller. I'm opening my IDE. And it tells me it was successfully uploaded. I have a green light there. So let me hold this up. And you'll notice that this time my, my servo is actually starting over here. So let's see where it moves to when I hit green. Oh, all the way over to the one side. You see it's moving much quicker and going still from one side to the other. So pretty cool, huh? Let's talk a little bit about the rest of uh, things that we, we need to uh, think about for our activity. Um, how about our, our real world? Servos are used in a lot of different things like, uh, like RC typically, um, but also in, in manufacturing when I need to um, be able to define a position where I want a motion to go to a certain position. Servos are, <laughs> of different sizes are used very regularly. So that's one way. So this is something that typically um, you would use um, in, in the real world. Um, extensions, where would you go from this? Well, we always encourage you again to start a sketch from scratch and bring all the blocks in. Or again, we have examples for the getting started as an extension that you're welcome to open and just see uh, how that would look as a getting started. So that was number three, moving our servo. We're ready to move on to number four. So come back and we'll get ready to do another one.